This is me parking the new junior. And me annoying the mechanics. Abbiamo terminato. And me taking a selfie with the head of Alfa Romeo. Also, hiding in the back seat of the junior so I don't end up in the shot. And this is Andrea doing the Mille Miglia with Davide Cironi. And this is me at the finale of the Mille Miglia. But let's take a step back. The Mille Miglia, we all know it a little bit, but maybe not so much in detail. It starts in Brescia, visits Rome, and then Brescia again for a total of about 1,600 kilometers. Very nearly 1,000 miles. Although this time actually it exceeded 2,000 kilometers. Only models from 1957 or earlier can be entered, and many of those entered had already done the Mille Miglia at least once, and many other cars of historical significance. It's a timed race, not a top speed race, and so you have to respect the timetable. And there are official points with special tests of speed, average or time sections that accumulate points or penalties. As for the scores, the older cars have correction coefficients to equalize with the more modern ones. Still, it's one thing for me to tell you, but another for you to see it for yourself. La mia, My Mille Miglia will be a little bit different because I'm going behind the scenes, backstage so to speak. I'll do it aboard the new Alfa Romeo Jr. in its first real dynamic public outing. So I'm very curious to know what the public reception will be. But for now, I'm going onwards towards victory here in Brescia. Now for scrutineering and the official start to the 2024 edition of the Mille Miglia. The Mille Miglia of Andrea and Davide Cironi, on the other hand, sees them aboard a 1956 Alfa Romeo 1900, which usually rests in the Arese Museum, supervised by the Heritage Division of Stellantis. Her number is 405, but she's not alone. Siamo alla partenza della Mille Miglia e qui c'è la Alfa Romeo 1009 Sport Spider, una barchetta tipica delle vetture sportive italiane, una vettura che sarà guidata da Nicola Larini e Luca Ciucci, insomma un, un equipaggio veramente doc per un Alfa Romeo in un momento in cui l'Alfa Romeo chiaramente sta vivendo una grande coesione tra passato e futuro. And speaking of the future, it's the same Jean-Philippe Imparato who explains why he wanted the new junior at the Mille Miglia. È l'occasione dell'occasione. Volevo assolutamente presentare questa junior alla gente, ai clienti, agli appassionati, alla storia. Sembrava a questo punto il momento, il momento chiave per far vedere questa macchina. È la prima volta eh, nel mondo dove facciamo girare la macchina. And this is the right time to introduce you to Bartholomew, also known as Mayo, and Paul, the two mechanics from Stellantis Heritage who took care of the 1900 of Andrea and Davide for weeks already, preparing it for this day. La vettura ha una preparazione di circa due settimane prima dell'evento e quindi si fa un check totale motore, elettrico, telaio e poi si va alle verifiche dopo le verifiche la, la fatidica funzionatura dove siamo pronti per partire Punching what? This is the procedure to give the official verification of the car to ensure its condition and authenticity conform to the rules Don't forget this. First day at the Mille Miglia. I don't think I've ever studied so much in my life. This is only the first stage. So, and all this for only this afternoon. So I hope for you that you never have to study all this stuff here because it's a lot of fun, but lots of effort. But it's very challenging, so let's see what comes. The car is wonderful. The organization is great. Let's see how difficult it will be. The departure from Viale Venezia and Brescia was quick because only shortly thereafter for Andrea and Davide, these special trials began, interspersed with a few obligatory stops to greet the fans, who came to see the passage of the legendary Alpha number 405. But now, off to Turin. And in the evening's triumphant entrance for Andrea and Davide, even escorted by the police, as if they were heads of state, at the end of the day, we arrived at the hotel, but someone was still not finished, so I will show you. Mayo and Paul go into action first at the gas station with a tank check using an old-fashioned method and filling the tank. Rispetto dei chilometri che abbiamo fatto, è molto economica per gli anni che ha. 
and I also took the opportunity to have a nice ride with Mayo to the hotel. When would I get that chance again? Ma, sarei quasi convinto di fare la mille miglia come partecipante. And in the garage where the 1900 will sleep, her two guardian angels begin to take care of her, thanks to all the equipment traveling on the supporting Stelvio. Sto controllando il livello dell'olio, sto portandolo di nuovo a livello perché la macchina, essendo un po' datata con tutti questi chilometri, ne ha mangiato un po'. There's a definite list of things to do. I principali sono tensione batteria, livello dell'olio, livello dell'acqua, si controllano se ci sono perdite di benzina, cerca le luci. Con questa operazione abbiamo completato i controlli dei livelli. Ora controllerò ancora l'olio dei freni, ma sicuramente è a posto. Domani mattina, prima della partenza, gli daremo una pulitina. Oh, sì. E con questo abbiamo terminato. Seconda giornata. Second day of Mille Miglia 2024. We're at the Palavela building in Turin. This is where all the cars that are about to leave for the second day are. And of course, here are Andrea and Davide. Crossing the regions of Piedmont and Liguria, we encountered all kinds of weather, from cold fog to the heat of Genoa. And here in the old port, the junior has attracted a lot of attention. Meanwhile, Andrea and Davide are immersed in other technical challenges with the 1900 that, mile after mile, forces them to adjust their driving styles. It's important to remember we are in 1956 with this car. You can tell, driving it, how advanced it was and why it was so desired. But we also learn how to manage this transmission that, unlike the 1900 sedan, is a five-speed gearbox with reverse. And there's a trick to driving it, because second gear occasionally grinds a bit, correct? Yes. The trick is, now we are in third. We have to go into second. What just happened? We shift here on the steering wheel, but second gear is quite temperamental. The gearbox is synchronized, but we realize that it really prefers you to shift like this. So if you try to shift like this instead, then this happens. It's very unpleasant, especially when there is an audience cheering. That's right, exactly. So you want this manoeuvre here instead. So you have to sort of trick the car. Yes, yes, we could say that we fake it a little bit with the synchronization of the gearbox, and then it's classic double clutch, in a way a little bit different from how you might drive your regular Fiat 500. The cool thing about this trip is that I get to share a piece of it with the people who worked on the development of the Junior, and then have them tell me about it directly. Daniela Alejandro, thank you for this ride. Is this your first time doing the Mille Miglia? How does it sound to you? In fact, I have a few questions for you. Alejandro, my question is, what is the main challenge when you draw an Alfa Romeo? Adesso la sfida è piuttosto di fare una, una macchina che sia in grado di, di piacere a, a, a dei clienti che hanno una tradizione, una cultura Alfa Romeo, ma anche a, a dei clienti che, che sono nuovi, con una, un target di clienti, di, di, di gente finalmente che non hanno magari neanche pensato mai a comprare un Alfa Romeo perché erano troppo cari o perché erano troppo sportivi o perché non erano... Daniela, how did you come up with the PR communication considering precisely what Alejandro said? Allora, abbiamo iniziato a lavorare con i primi materiali rilasciati, strizzare un occhio a un cliente più giovane. Vogliono anche trasmettere questo entusiasmo che è cross generazionale, non lo si va a stabilire su una generazione specifica e sui materiali che arriveranno. Diciamo che continuiamo a lavorare su questo uh, senso di, di sentire l'emozione profonda, quella che è viscerale, uh, tipica di Alfa Romeo. How is it to drive the Junior? As I still haven't been able to try it. Uh, io posso dire, l'ho provata, ho fatto un giro a Torino in un percorso con l'ingegneria. È bellissimo. 
è una macchina che senti su strada, uh, che accelera, uh, che è un alfa. Cioè, la senti, ti siedi, la guidi, la senti nello stomaco alfa. Very last question. What is the style or design detail that you like the most about the Junior? Mi piace la, la coda, lo spoiler, la coda, il fanale posteriore, perché eh, unisce questa, secondo me, una estetica che, che funziona, con questo, questo collegamento con il lunotto, però anche è eh, un elemento funzionale. E quando la vedi, bah, la macchina è soprattutto ti dà un'impressione di stabilità, perché la macchina è un po' come un trapezzo appoggiato sulla strada, no? Non è un dettaglio, però è una somma dei dettagli che ti fanno alla fine, che ti danno una sensazione globale. Grazie. Thank you e and I wish you a safe drive. Grazie e buona mille miglia a te. Grazie mille. Grazie. Grazie mille miglia. Grazie mille Grazie miglia. Mille miglia. <ride> A very cool trip, partially because of the coastal roads, partially because we listened and sang good music, and a bit because I enjoyed not getting into the frame of the official pictures, which you can find on Alfa Romeo's profiles. I take advantage of this lunch break to get a closer look at the Junior, because it has so many typical features that need to be looked at closely, such as this. Look, that is so three-dimensional, but also technological because it's among the very few in the industry that can boast the LED matrix technology for the light clusters. I also like this detail of the perforated logo. And then one thing I noticed, seeing it in person, and that's despite the fact that it is four meters and 17 centimeters long, so 30 to 35 centimeters less than the Tonali, here it looks longer. This is because it has a very streamlined profile. Then probably also because of the two-tone. And then there's the truncated tail in the tradition of Alfa Romeo that, that makes it very recognizable, even at night when all the light segments here are on. I'll move in to show you some details, such as dual digital instrumentation and 10.25 inches for both screens with an infotainment system that is advanced with voice assistance, but also with chat GPT. And then lots and lots of related features, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and other functions that you can then download. The climate control, however, remains separate down here. There's your phone charging port here, thanks to two outlets, USB type A and type C. But there's also a pad for wireless charging compatible phones. I really like this detail of the start button, round in the center of the tunnel. Here the driving mode can be chosen, and then also the Alcantara that's also here on the dashboard. And here in the center of the vents you see the backlit Bischioni, the Alfa Romeo snake, because obviously you can customize the ambient light tones. And speaking of Bischioni, and check out the beauty of this, placed on these Seibelt seats that are really, really comfortable, restraining, and then just beautiful. I would say, though, that we can leave. And by the way, one thing I didn't tell you is that not only is this junior equipped with level 2 driving assistance, but it is also a hybrid. Here we have just completed a test, pretty long, around 7 kilometers at 40 kilometers per hour. Beautiful scenery, the car strolled through. Even this is part of the Mille Miglia experience. Pitch darkness. Let's do this. Yet darkness will not stop Paul and Mayo, who are already actually at work on the 1900. I'm going to go bother them a little bit. Mayo, how did it go today? How much did you consume? Oggi ho consumato 56 litri di benzina, più o meno. Is that a lot? No, per i chilometri che ha fatto e la difficoltà che ha vissuto, ha consumato il giusto. Siamo sempre nella media dei 7 km più o meno, 7 al litro. Ho più attacchi io della massa. <ride> Are we done though? Per stasera sì. 
Ok, domani. see you tomorrow. A domani un'altra avventura. <laughs> the next day I continued in the junior, changing driving partners. Grazie Thank you for having me along for this chunk of the Mille Miglia. How are you doing? Come sta andando? Benissimo. Benissimo. Ma era la prima volta? Prima volta. Anche per me è la prima volta. Let's hope it's not the last. No, nel senso magari. No. But maybe we'll meet here next year as well, maybe. But I can take advantage of the fact that we find ourselves riding in your creation right now. To ask you some questions that I have. Mario, for example, you worked in the overall development of the project. Is there any detail that really satisfies you? Quello che veramente alla fine cioè, mi, mi, mi ha soddisfatto molto è stato il pacchetto completo di guidabilità, piacere di guida, fruibilità quotidiana che secondo noi è veramente venuto bene. Noi non, eh, siamo convinti che un, un qualcosa come questo oggi non c'era. Il comfort quotidiano anche di guidare questa, questa macchina unita alla sua al suo piacere di guida secondo me è stato un bel risultato. But I, by the way, I'm having a good time back here with you behind the wheel, but it seems to me that you're having fun too. Io certo che mi sto divertendo. Cioè, questa, questa è vero, è quello che vogliamo da tutte le alfa, no? Il sorriso e il divertimento alla guida. E come puoi vedere su questa macchina strappa il sorriso ogni volta che si avvicini, ti avvicini a una curva perché se la senti che non ha ritardi, non ha... passa esattamente dove vuoi passare e come dicono gli psicologi il piacere deriva dal controllo e qui hai sempre tutto sotto controllo perché tu senti il imposti la curva e senti che la macchina ti viene dietro è quello che ti dà la soddisfazione del nostro lavoro durante lo sviluppo good and i have to say i also feel good and safe to be in a car driven by you go go let's go and enjoy this mille miglia the lunch break in castiglione della pescaia was a real celebration where the public could come and see the cars, but also an opportunity for me to go and say hello to Andrea and Davide and Mayo and Paul struggling with a few little jobs, the windshield wipers and a door that wouldn't close quite right. Is it too hot? No, siamo scoppiati e stanchi. And we're only halfway through. Siamo neanche a metà ancora. Però dai, poco per volta ce la faremo, ce la faremo. Content of real things, of real life, that's what people want to see. I forgot to eat it early this morning. Here after lunch, it's all melted, but I don't care. I'll eat it anyway. And while the drivers take a little break, I had a chat with Paul to find out how he came to do what he does. E questo mestiere parte sempre da una forte passione, sicuramente. È la passione che ti, ti trasporta poi in questo magnifico mondo. So, off to Rome with Andrea and Davide in the 1900, who were engaged in other special trial sections and routes in small towns that had a warm reception from all ages. The arrival in Rome was triumphant, with thousands of people waiting for the historic parade to come through the downtown streets. Of all the stops, perhaps the one in Siena is the most fascinating, with the stop in the Piazza del Campo. But just time for a photo, and then it's off again. The great team mechanics, Mayo and Paul, they call this 1900 the comfortable one for reasons we'll go into later. But first, Davide made a very interesting observation to me about the aerodynamics. Yes, I noticed one thing. On many cars today, maybe not the super premium ones, but the more regular ones, there is no longer attention paid to the aerodynamics for comfort and the turbulence. Earlier we started to get hot and lowering the window like this. You cannot even hear any difference on the microphones. With a modern car, the very smooth aerodynamic surface would produce unbearable turbulence inside. We could not even talk to each other. Instead, nothing changes here at all. Air comes in, but it comes in behind. It doesn't even hit the face of the driver or the navigator in this case. This is because when the machines were being made using threads of wool instead of marketing spreadsheets, this type of aerodynamics was more valuable. There was less focus on pure efficiency, rather the comfort of these grand tourers like the 1900 that we're driving, 
was taken into account with things like this. Thread of wool. Lamar 66 movie quote. Go see it. But if you're watching this, you've probably already seen it. But then the 1900 reminded us that you never know what can happen. Everything correct, perfect temperatures, and so on. However, when we were doing a million kilometers per hour, we noticed that while Davide was driving, there was a smell of burning plastic. It happened that we were going at a speed that I won't say, but nothing crazy though. A speed we reached a few times these days, we heard a spinning noise and immediately smelled burning, so we were a little scared. But the second time it happened, we realized that it is the auxiliary fan being affected by the wind moving from the speed. It rubs and therefore makes a smell, but we solved it by going just a little below the speed of light. Or we solve the issue by just continuing like this. It will wear down a little bit and not burn anymore. I mean, either option of the two. So let's see. I vote for the second one. And I wait for Mayo to finish getting his hands on the 1900 so that we can have another chat. A real passion that goes beyond only cars. Ho avuto la possibilità nel tempo libero di di costruirmi un trattorino a casa e lo adopero come un trattorino per tagliare l'erba e l'ho costruito con dei pezzi di recupero di di vetture, cioè ho adoperato un cambio di un Alfa 75 con alcuni pezzettini di, di, di Vespa, di, di, di un motore di un generatore, ho fatto un motorino che mi, mi, mi taglia l'erba e mi, mi, mi fa un utilizzo. Another long leg, but this is the penultimate one before Brescia, which is from Rome San Lazzaro di Savena, on the outskirts of Bologna, where the super sprint arrived late in the evening after an obligatory visit to the Futa Pass, where Andrea's friends got working to refresh the crew of Car 405 who, after almost 2,000 kilometers traveled, literally fell in love with their Alfa Romeo, both its style and its driving dynamics. At each stopping point, people approach us and ask us something about the car. And one thing for me emerged most notably, not just the crazy engine sound or the fantastic styling, but it's the setup of the car, because we have 165 by 400 tires. Davide and I were saying a little while ago that because they have a very high sidewall and they are also narrow, you feel more under braking and so on. And when you enter the corner, you think, here it will not grip. But she's telling you, okay, I understand you're about to turn, we are going to turn. But there is some negotiation before you actually make the turn. Then she says, Andrea, you decided to turn, and in all this you have already arrived at the turn. It all makes you think, this will not end well, but it does. The car rolls so well, and it has less understeer than other cars, even the modern ones. We found ourselves in certain tight curves where you think the car will go a bit wide. Instead, it just stays there and it keeps going. It will maybe do a little bit of, shall we say, chirping, but it stays there. Amazing. Simply amazing. And at the end, Brescia, on the same stage where it all began, and where it all ends, as it happens, with the victory of an Alfa Romeo, a 1929 6C 750 SS Zagato, driven by Andrea Vesco and Fabio Savinelli. And this is where next year everything will start again, because this passion is unstoppable. As Enzo Ferrari notably said, it amounts to the, the most, most beautiful, beautiful race, race in the world. In the world.